Hi, and welcome to a video where we take a look at how we create a convolutional neural network using Keras and TensorFlow 2.0. So firstly, what is Keras and what is TensorFlow 2.0? So firstly, Keras is a high-level neural network API specifically for Python, and it makes constructing neural networks or convolutional neural networks extremely easy and extremely modular. It has the ability to use TensorFlow or CNTK or Theano backends. However, now with TensorFlow 2.0, it is very closely integrated with the TensorFlow backend. It's actually built into TensorFlow 2.0 to be fair, but now all of the features, all of the modularities are built together. And it's all credit to this guy, Francois Cholet, who has been basically, he's been tremendous in making deep learning more accessible by making and developing Keras over the last few years. So what about TensorFlow 2.0? Now TensorFlow has been developed by Google, it's developed in-house by Google Brain in 2015, and it has now included the Keras API within the TensorFlow 2.0, okay? Now what TensorFlow is, essentially a low-level computational engine that is used for high-performance numerical computation, and it crosses a variety of platforms and uses CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. It is applied to many other languages like C++ and now JavaScript and TensorFlow Lite, and I believe Java, I'm not entirely sure, but it's, it started with Python, it's a Python API. And it is relatively simple to use as well. However, Keras is far easier. And it allows us now to build complicated neural networks that utilize, as I said, GPUs and TPUs and CPUs in scalable fashion. So we can take advantage of large computer warehousing power. It allows us to view the training process and a lot of other things with the computational graph provided in TensorBoard. So why use Keras instead of pure TensorFlow? Well, like I said, Keras is extremely easy to use. It has a very Pythonic style of coding. So if you're very familiar with Python, using Keras is very straightforward and very easy. Modular means that we can add or remove different layers quite easily as well. We don't have to think too much about it. Also, we can just change different things like cost functions, optimizers, different initialization schemes, activation schemes, regularization schemes. It can just toy with a bunch of different things. So it makes just toying and prototyping convolutional neural networks or neural networks so easy. So it just speeds up the process so much. So unless you're doing cutting edge academic work or you need some kind of groundbreaking performance with using maybe some sort of pure low level TensorFlow or something in C++, using Keras offers so much versatility and its ability to quickly create efficient neural networks. So how do we go about building a CNN using Keras? And it's often referred to as TF Keras, TF for short, when we import TensorFlow, you'll get a new understanding of what this is. So these are imports here. So when we're importing Keras now in TensorFlow 2.0, we've previously, we didn't have to put tensorflow.keras.models, but now because Keras is built into TensorFlow, we can just quickly import tensorflow.keras.models and get all our TensorFlow layers and features and different algorithms, different loss functions, optimizers, all from this, these imports here. So this is the basic building blocks we'll use here to create a simple convolutional neural network. So this is the structure of how we use Keras to create a model. Firstly, we create a sequential model. Sequential meaning one layer comes after each other, so it's all linked in a straight line. There's no, what do you call, feedback loops or types of things. Straightforward neural network or convolutional neural network. We can just do model.add to add a layer, specify what kind of layer it is. We can specify kernel size, the size of how many convolutional layers we want, type of activation we want and the input shape, which is the image input shape it's referring to here. We can then add max pooling and create our max pooling window size. We can then flatten that layer, feed it into a dense or fully connected layer that outputs the number of classes here using different activations. Now we can compile it here by specifying the loss function, the optimizer, and what metrics we want to look at. So you can see how simple and straightforward using Keras is to create a convolutional neural network. It's pretty much as straightforward as it can get. So now this is the other part here where we actually train a model. So we can specify the bat size, the epochs, how much information we want to see while it trains and point it to our validation or test data here and specify our input training data here. And it's basically that easy and that simple. So what didn't we look at here? How did we get our input data? How did we get X train and Y train X test and Y test, that's something we're going to have to learn in by using Python itself. Now, how did we get the information about the details of the model I'm creating? How do we specify things like which loss function optimizer, what activation functions to use here, those sorts of things? We don't know. We didn't talk about that yet. And how many layers is enough? 
to design optimal network. These are things we'll discuss in a later video. But for now, let's take a look at how we actually train a convolutional neural network. And by the way, just going back to the slide, the reason I mentioned these things is I want to get you started thinking about these things. Because thinking about designing convolutional neural networks is extremely important in the ability to create some cool networks. So once you're aware of these things, you don't have to think about it too much yet, just be aware of it. And as we progress to more complicated convolutional neural networks in this course, you'll start getting exposed to what these things mean. So now let's take a look at the training process here. So remember, I said this is the general structure of a convolutional neural network. Now this is the training process here. Ignore this for now. It's just for you to reiterate what we learned before. So the training process is we get the data, prepare our data set, which is basically pre-processing of it to get it ready for a neural. For our CNN, we design and create a model, which is what we discussed before. This here, how what configuration, how many convolutional layers, what different activation layers to use, blah, blah, blah. Then we just train our model. We take our results, analyze our results. And then if the model looks good, we can actually test it on some real world data. So what have we learned in this chapter? We've learned what is Keras, what is TensorFlow, why Keras is so important, how do we use Keras to build a CNN, and we looked in the last slide, the training process of the CNN, and we just talked about briefly about different ways we can tweak CNN designs. So now let's go into Python, and in our next video, and load and prepare data for our Keras CNN. Thank you.